Alrighty, hi y'all. So we're gonna do something a little different moving forward from now on. So I'm gonna start doing videos like this a little more so that way, you know. And well, first of all, the reasoning is because it's these these videos are a lot more easier and faster for me to produce. It also allows me to just kind of spitball and just do something real quick so that way I can have a video out a lot faster. So that way, one, I'm not missing deadlines, and two, I, I'm just getting my thoughts out on a movie a lot in a lot more timely manner, you know, instead of spending like a week or two working on a script and then and then recording the voiceover for the script and then editing everything together. And now, uh, and you know, most of these essay videos are just take a long time to produce. So, you know, sometimes by the time I get it done, the movie I want to talk about or the subject I want to talk about just isn't really relevant anymore. So hence why we're doing this from now on. So with that being said, Let's talk about Alien Romulus. Okay, maybe I should talk about my relationship with the uh, franchise first. So I was first introduced to the franchise, probably like most people, was through the 1979 Ridley Scott entry, the original Alien. Didn't like it very much when it first, or didn't like it very much when I first saw it. And then not long after that, I saw Aliens, which I thought, which I enjoyed a lot more. It was fun. I mean, it's a very different movie. It's not very comparable. But in terms of just overall personal movie experience, I had more fun with that. I still think it's only okay. It's kind of whatever. I don't really care about it. Like, I'm sorry, but it's kind of like a one and done thing for me personally. I will say the original Alien did have its uh, 45th anniversary celebration back in April and it returned to theaters. And I went to the theater to see it again. And I actually like it a lot more this time, you know. I actually picked up on the atmosphere and the just the general setting of the movie and why it was such a big deal when it came out when it did. And overall, I, I gotta say, I think I like it more than Aliens now. So Alien is probably my favorite in the franchise. I will say I did skip out on Alien 3 because of what, um, because everything I heard with David Fincher and the studio meddling and, and everything. And then there's a resurrection. Nobody really liked that. Same thing with Prometheus and Covenant. I hear like not very good things about it as well. So for the most part, I kind of missed out. I guess you could say I missed out like more than half the franchise. And to be honest, I don't think I really cared to go visit those movies, to be honest. It could kind of whatever. And yeah, I should probably revisit them to find it, you know, uh, for my own opinions. But you know, I'm, I think I'm okay with not having an opinion on those movies. So this leads us to Alien Romulus. What do I think of Alien Romulus? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I wouldn't necessarily say I had very high expectations going into the movie. Going to the movie, I was aware that it was pretty well received by most of the audience and the critics as well. So I, I had some expectations though, but considering I'm not the most invested into the Alien franchise, whether this movie sinks or swim, it doesn't really matter to me, right? Ultimately, I think it's okay. It, it has major issues that really takes me out of the movie. I think there's more. Of, this movie has more flaws than it does good or positive or whatever, right? I do want to make it abundantly clear though, I don't think this is a bad movie at all in any capacity. There's more flaws then there's good, but it's not terrible. But like I said, it's probably because I'm just getting too old to be bothered by things I don't really care about too much. Like I said, like I said, I'm not the most invested into the Alien franchise. So, you know, I'm kind of chilling. So to actually talk about the movie, let's actually start with what I thought they did well. Uh, set design and production, I thought was fantastic. The cinematography, plus the cinematography on top of that made things feel really atmospheric. And there were times where the movie just looked absolutely stunning to look at. I also enjoyed David Ramsey, not David Ramsey, that's a financial dude. I also really liked David Johnson's performance as Andy. And then that's about it really, in terms of good. I, I, don't, I don't really care about anything else after that. So let's talk about the bad, right? So first of all, let's start with the cast of characters. I think this is actually like a very common complaint, even by the people who really enjoy the movie. But the cast of characters kind of suck. Like, they're cardboard, one note characters. It's hard to care when they die, right? So like, for a movie that hinges on its horror and its tension to succeed, not caring about the characters when they die really hurts the tension building. Especially when the cast of characters are already small as is, right? Like you can't afford to have them just be cannon fodder, which is kind of what they did with the cast for the most part. They're just cannon fodder. So they don't really do a good job on making you care for them. So when they die, you just don't care. And like, just like that, a lot of the tension is just gone. The movie's kind of riddled with like on-screen contrivances as well, where I'm just not fully convinced that the that our main cast deserves to walk out of each situation. And it kind of takes me out of the movie and once again, it hurts attention even more. Like, 
majority of the movie it plays itself like it's building a lot of tension or there's these scenes are just really tense that the way it plays out right but but with the on-screen contrivances on how our characters get out of each situation as well as not caring about the characters when they die that's like a majority of the attention as is so it's really hard to really invest yourself in the conflict that the characters are going through not to mention the xenomorphs are kind of like dumb as bricks in this movie and which is very uncharacteristic of them because they're supposed to be like perfect they're supposed to be perfect killing organisms but like why are they kind of acting kind of dumb i guess that's the non-spoiler portion of this conversation like uh that's really all I have to say, really. Like I can say I don't really care about the franchise enough to really, you know, really dive deep into my feelings. But like those were definitely just my first impressions and my first observations upon the, my first viewing of the movie. So let's get into the actual spoiler side of things so I can really explain why I feel the way I do. Other than the cast of characters, I feel like it doesn't you don't really need to spoil the movie to really uh, get the point across. They're flat, boring. There's nothing to them, really, right? motivation is very surface level like they just give you their motivation and then that's it they don't really you know dive deep into it or anything right so it's kind of like i said hard to care about the characters now let's actually talk about the on-screen contrivances i was talking about right so there's a couple of scenes in the movie that really ruined it for me right oh so one scene not necessarily a on-screen contrivance but like it was just kind of goofy the way it was shot and it just played out and it's when tyler died like i don't know something about that scene was just it was just very unserious i couldn't take it seriously and i just so like like tyler dying was supposed to be like a very dramatic moment the way it played out but the screenplay just looked kind of goofy I, I don't really care if anything i kind of chuckled a little bit when he died i <laughs> it called me a bad person i don't whatever so moving forward a couple of on-screen contrivances is uh when the xenomorphs were chasing uh andy and i forgot her name rain so andy and rain kind of hit a dead end at a door that they can't get through right and the xenomorphs are chasing them from behind so they're basically trapped right and the xenomorphs know where they are they and the xenomorph that are chasing them knows where andy and rain are it's only one path it's only one direction for them to be so tell me why did the xenomorphs take their sweet ass time making their way to rain and andy are these supposed to be like perfect organisms very intelligent and that's the thing the earlier in the movie they established that the xenomorphs are very intelligent and if you just keep up with the movies in general right you know that already so tell me why did they take their time to reach andy and rain and because they took forever to get to andy and rain i gave rain enough time to figure up to figure out a plan to get out and when they did finally decide to attack tell me why they slowly jumped in one at a time giving rain the opportunity to kill them off one at a time these are supposed to be intelligent organisms by the way they're supposed to be perfect killing machines but then they pull off the classic trope of the bad guys standing around as the main as the main character beats them up one at a time like are you serious like i'm not fully convinced that rain really outsmart or outplayed the situation that she was in it's only because the xenomorphs are being freaking dumb and then there's another scene in the elevator shaft they're like in zero they're like in zero g or whatever they're floating up the elevator shaft right but rain didn't grab onto something to hang on in time as the uh gravity turned back on so now she's just free falling right so tell me why did a xenomorph caught her by wrapping its tail around her when they could have just easily impaled her as she was falling down like that's another opportunity xenomorphs could have just killed off rain but like instead they decided to be dumb and not only that when they finally did when it did catch rain around its tail it slowly pushed its head forward towards rain giving andy enough time to drop on it and blast it to death i'm just like like, on-screen contrivances like that, right, kind of pulls me out of the movie. And not only does it pull me out of the movie, but like I said, it goes back to the tension where it just kills it. It kills the tension. So, like, not only do I not care about the characters, but, like, the screenplay isn't doing a good job of convincing me that Rain is in real danger. She's literally a walking plot armor in this movie, for the most part. Now, I wouldn't call her, like, a Mary Sue per se, but, like, it just more so, like, you know, I guess the situation around her, right? The situation around her allows her to get out. So, for a horror movie, it, I just didn't care, man. Like, on paper, it makes sense. It works. But the actual, what happened, you, what you see on screen doesn't work and then the movie kind of has i wouldn't necessarily the movie also has like a pacing issue per se but i feel like it does kind of drag on a little bit right uh the opening 
felt like a snooze fest kind of and then when, once things finally started to pick up it kind of just it immediately calms down again and it, I stopped caring again and then the final act where you know with the uh human xenomorph hybrid I just I was just checked out at that point I just couldn't care anymore I mean, yeah, he looked creepy at first, but then as you keep seeing him, you're like, okay, whatever, dude, you look, you just, you just look dumb at this point. So basically the movie just doesn't know when to end. It just keeps throwing shit at the audience and I just couldn't care anymore, dude. I will say what Romulus is doing for the Alien franchise is kind of what Prey did for the Predator franchise. I say this as someone who likes Prey, but doesn't matter what you think of Prey, no matter how flawed it was, it was very well received. It basically revived the Predator franchise. So when a sequel or another movie was in question of ever happening after the predator back in 2018 or whatever 2018 2019 whatever uh prey made it certain that there was going to be another sequel or another entry to the predator franchise and then same thing with alien romulus here for the alien franchise doesn't matter what i think of it clearly it is very well received and it revived the alien franchise and you know what I'm okay with that. And whenever these movies finally come out, I'll still go. I'm still probably going to catch them anyways. Uh, it's not going to bother me too much. I mean, like I said, I, I wasn't miserable watching Alien Romulus, and I'm still not losing sleep over it or anything. But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on Alien Romulus as a whole. Like, it's not. I don't think it's terrible. Well, s some people might say it's terrible because you know they have it. They have a much deeper passion for the franchise than I do. But me personally, it had too many flaws with not enough good to make up for it but the good it did have was enjoyable so but yeah i mean that's about it really see you nerds okay so i'm going back uh because i forgot to mention this during my whole uh commentary earlier but basically another just contrived character decision or just a dumb character decision that was made so that x y and z could happen right so for and what i'm talking about is when what's her face the pregnant chick when she decided to take the black goo all of a sudden like why was she just suddenly inclined to just inject it into herself when she and the rest knows what the effects or they don't know what the effects were so now it's kind of like what's it called and i mean like i guess when you're in f intense physical pain you know you're just trying to get rid of that pain right so you do whatever it takes no matter the risk however it would be a more interesting actually let me let me rewrite this screenplay how it would have worked out so that way it's a little more believable when she actually does inject it into herself right so when they first found k in a cocoon they pulled her out she's in pain they don't know what to do. They need to treat her. Andy offers the black goo, and then and then Rain and Tyler start arguing whether they should inject it to her or not. But then Rain, but then the pregnant chick on the other hand is down there is like begging them to just inject it to make the pain go away, right? So a little more back and forth. Rain convinces the pregnant chick, it's okay, just hold on. We'll get your medical attention. All right, cool, whatever. We have that set up now, so that way when she does inject, it, it's a little more believable. Fast forward when they're in the elevator before Rain sends off the pregnant chick back to the ship slow down the scene a little bit look at rain look at the hesitance in her face right rain looks at the pregnant chick and says can i trust you to take this back to the ship and not inject yourself with one or whatever right something like that and then with reluctance the pregnant chick agrees and then and the rain hands off the black goo to her to take back to the ship actually in fact when she gets back on the back on the ship ash the ai was talking to her anyways he could have also further helped convince her to inject it he could be like hey don't listen to her don't listen to rain you're in deep pain this will make it go away i promise we did the test and everything cool and then when rain so when the pregnant chick injects the black goo into her it's a lot more believable at that point so that way the final act or whatever the final confrontation with the hybrid xenomorph wouldn't have been as contrived and yeah that's just my two cents on it <laughs>